Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the latest Hurricane Tracker app video update recorded Friday, August 22nd, around 4.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Invest 96L still has a high chance of development, according to the National Hurricane Center. In fact, during the next two days, the Hurricane Center has increased development chances from 60 to 70 percent, and overall throughout the next five days, there's still an 80 percent chance of development. And we'll show you the satellite loop in just a moment, but it finally appears the system is on its way to becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm crystal ball at some point this weekend over the next couple of days. Showers and uh, thunderstorms have increased markedly around the um, poorly defined low level center that the hurricane hunters found this afternoon. So the system is still disorganized, but with each passing hour, it appears that it is well on its way to becoming the next tropical cyclone here in the 2014 Atlantic season. The system is still moving off towards the west, maybe barely just north of due west, uh, still at a rapid clip at about 15 miles per hour. You can see it's beginning to really establish the upper level outflow here in the northern quadrant, and it's starting to just get that look of a developing tropical cyclone and I will put my cursor where the hurricane hunters found a developing area of low pressure it would be in this region and it's going to be moving off uh, somewhere in this direction overnight and into the uh, morning hours on Saturday and that's going to be really key because we have some very high mountainous terrain here over the island of Hispaniola and we'll show you a graphic and kind of talk more about that in just a moment First, let's start with the latest computer models. And the main thing I want you to take away from this is there is absolutely no consensus. We have computer models taking the system over Key West and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And we have uh, computer models making a sharp north turn. And then four or five days from now, uh, quickly taking it out into the Atlantic Ocean. We have some models uh, taking the system to the north and then bending it back to, towards the northeast, uh, sorry, back towards the northwest, towards the northeastern United States. So, unfortunately, there's no clear evidence this afternoon as to where exactly the storm is going to go. Each model still has its own opinion on what it wants to do with the upper level uh, steering currents and ultimately where it would track the storm. One thing that we do, do know is that waters in this part of the basin, especially over the Bahamas and the Gulf Stream, are in the upper 80s to the low 90s in some portions and most most of the computer model guidance is forecasting a very favorable upper air environment and for that matter the Gulf too te water temperatures out here are above normal in the upper 80s and a few spots in the low 90s so there's plenty of fuel for the system to work with once it does develop into a tropical storm here over the weekend Taking a look at the current low-level steering pattern um, here at the very lowest levels of the atmosphere, right now there is a high-pressure ridge, the Bermuda High over the uh, central and eastern Atlantic, and the clockwise winds around that are pushing the system off towards the west and the west-northwest, and the system in fact is located here just northwest of Puerto Rico, and over the next 24 hours or so, the models are in very good agreement that the system will move off towards the west or the west-northwest. A couple of other things I wanted to point out with this steering chart graphic. Over the Bahamas, you can see that steering currents are very weak. Uh, there's no lines moving in one direction or another. And we can also see the beginnings of this upper-level trough that we've been mentioning here over the uh, northern Atlantic. And again, that's going to be one of the key players. Um, as to where this system will eventually track. Right now, looking at the latest satellite trends and uh, looking at the most recent computer model guidance, the most likely scenario is for this system to continue to intensify as we see it doing now here uh, just northwest of Puerto Rico and for the center or for this low, developing area of low pressure to pass just north of the high mountainous, mountainous terrain here over Hispaniola, get strong enough to begin to feel that upper level trough and possibly threaten the southeastern and central Bahamas 
and then begin to move towards the north. And then once it finds this, uh, this weakness here over the northern Atlantic, the system could be moving very slowly because, once again, steering currents are very weak here. And we could have just a uh, tropical cyclone or tropical storm, possibly even a hurricane if some of the models are right, just kind of drifting out here for several days underneath uh, a building area of high pressure to the north and this exiting trough of low pressure. And I think this map here shows it a little bit more clearer for you. Um, this is what the GFS model is forecasting for Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Looks like we have uh, possibly tropical depression by sometime tomorrow afternoon. And it has the system over the southeastern Bahamas. Here's the trough of low pressure. And remember, tropical cyclones tend to move towards areas of low pressure. So if this storm is uh, getting strong enough and deep enough, it will absolutely begin to feel the effects of this trough and begin to move towards the north-northeast and possibly even the northeast. But unfortunately, it's not as clear-cut as that because we have a developing area of high pressure here that's forecasted to replace the back edge of this trough. We also have this Bermuda High, which we mentioned a few moments ago. This is forecasted to build towards the west and, and deepen. And basically, that could put a squeeze play on the system. And this is what the European model was showing with its run overnight. The system moving here into the southeastern Bahamas moving to the north as it begins to feel that trough of low pressure up here. And then once the trough of low pressure starts to move away, we have a high pressure ridge building to its west and building to its north, and it puts a squeeze play to where the, the system basically would stall out or just very slowly drift towards the northeast. And some of the latest runs, like we showed you on the spaghetti models a moment ago, are having this high pressure build in even stronger and pushing the storm a little bit closer towards the uh, eastern coast of the United States. Right now, we believe that's the most likely solution. Then eventually, at some point, hopefully another trough would swing out from the Midwest and pick it up and move it out to sea. But again, there's still so much uncertainty. There's so many players on the field. It's just going to all come down to which one is stronger. This high pressure ridge, this trough of low pressure, or this high pressure over here, and then how uh, weak or how strong the storm is. So this is about as complex of a pattern that you will see ever in the tropics. And I have a feeling we're going to have uh, some long days, especially some long nights ahead, uh, tracking this system throughout the weekend and into next week. Now over the short term, the next 12 to 24 hours is going to be very critical for the system. We have some very high mountains over Hispaniola. In fact, we have a peak here that's over 10,000 feet. And as we have seen with past systems, any organizing system that moves over this higher terrain has a fairly decent chance of, um, of being disrupted and becoming less organized. We saw that with uh, Tropical Storm Ike in August a couple of years ago. Here's the GFS model, which is one of the more reliable models. It's forecasting the main area of vorticity where that low level is trying to form to move north of the island of Hispaniola and avoid the mountains while we have another model, one that's a little bit less reliable, the Canadian model, is showing the system becoming entangled with the mountains here. And ultimately, that leads to a weaker system. Uh, this model forecasts strong high pressure to build in, and the system just kind of drifts off generally towards the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So that solution would be option B at this point, cannot be completely ruled out. I don't think we'll be able to rule anything out until this storm um, gets past Hispaniola, whether it's up here or over here. And we should know that answer, hopefully by sometime tomorrow afternoon. We'll just have to watch these latest satellite trends and see if this developing area of low pressure moves more like this or more towards the west-northwest away from these high mountains. So we're going to be watching this very closely. We will keep you updated. And we want to look at a fairly decent analog. Again, we had Hurricane Isaac. Remember a few uh, a couple years ago, especially in the northern, northern Gulf Coast, impacted Louisiana. As this system was approaching the Caribbean, the models were showing a recurve east of Florida due to a weakness in the atmosphere, an upper-level trough that was actually further south than the one that's forecasted now over the northwest Atlantic. This system became pretty weak as it crossed the terrain of Hispaniola. It was unable to feel that weakness 
in the atmosphere. The models started shifting towards the west. You know, they basically moved from the western Atlantic and they eventually had a consensus over Florida and then ultimately a consensus just uh, east of Louisiana where the system eventually made landfall. So right now, the chances of this happening are still fairly low. Most likely it will move up here uh, in the southeastern Bahamas and either pull out towards the northeast, which is less likely, or basically just kind of stall out here east of the United States between Hatteras and Bermuda, and then possibly be picked up by a trough later on next week and moved out to sea. Speaking of Bermuda, if you live on the island or you have interest, please continue to pay close attention to the storm as you may very well be affected in some way by this system next week. We really can't rule anyone out right now from the Gulf Coast all the way up to the Northeast. Right now, the highest impact areas of a tropical cyclone appear to be the Bahamas. We have you guys under an elevated alert. Please continue to monitor the system closely. If you live along the uh, Florida Straits here in the Southeast Florida, know that option B is still on the table. Continue to check in, and we will keep you updated through this weekend as we continue to track upcoming Tropical Storm Cristobal. Thank you for using the Hurricane Tracker app. We hope you have a great weekend.